much. I would like to speak in Italian since the main part of the, of the audience is made up of, of Italian people. And I had the opportunity to teach all over Europe, in Rome, and now at the moment I'm in Denver. And I'm lucky enough to be a member of the uh, ABC for some years, in particular since 2006. And I'm about to introduce a research that was created about 10 years ago, so 10 years of work trying to, uh, to, find, to find out new elements all over the world, uh, collecting uh, more than 8,000 case studies on the appeal and fascination of museums, so how to create appealing exhibitions. And I divided this work by events and formats. We even have a lot of material on uh, bathrooms, <laughs> so um, different services on how to interact, mini markets, e-books, and it, it's very easy to, to read them because they're on the slide. I'd like to show you some pictures taken from our uh, museum interactive app, and I would like to start by those museums changing their internal space perception. As you can see, there are reindeers uh, inside the museums, and this creates a, quite a strong effect in this context. We also have museums and exhibitions showing what's behind, so what is behind the picture. So showing all the different journey that the work, the piece of art had. And then we also have museums um, presenting a new perspective. Perspective. This is a referee chair, so imagine a selection of photos. This is just a, a very short selection of what we had. So to change the visitor's perspective, the visitor is at the core, at the center, and then there are museums showing the workshops live. Some of you go to the Denver Art Museum. I live in Denver, and the museum is huge, and this is the Natural History Museum of Denver. So the restoration part is completely visible. And then we also have exhibition spaces showing the history of the object. As you can see, these keys are on a steel shelf. And I'm showing this because it's interesting since it combines the culture of contact, uh, of digital contact and analogic contact. Our own objective is uh, increasing touch points and then I will talk about uh, cultural marketing. These keys come from a bakery in Amsterdam and this lady in the, in the bakery we are left these keys uh, by a um, Jewish family before uh, being uh, um, before going to the concentration camp. So these keys were preserved in this museum, and the users can have the possibility to touch them, to take a photography, to so obtain very high definition pictures. And then there's a computer, as you can see, and you can obtain through the cell phone, you can obtain a data sheet with all the history of the object. So just to give you a very simple example of applications, both in digital and analogic uh, views. This is the Amsterdam Historic Museum, and through a tunnel, you can go to this booth. On the right, there's a bed, and there's a basin, and then uh, a booth, an Amsterdam booth, and then you're there, and you can be seen by other people. So there are museums trying to work in a very deep way, trying to provide experiences. Other museums invite us to dress up, to wear the costumes of different cultures. Here is Berlin. And other museums invite us to photocopy the materials displayed. In many, in many places, you cannot touch anything. This is a problem for children, especially. But then there are museums inviting us to photocopy the materials. There are many of them, fortunately. And other museums invite us to have an olfactory experience of the museum. This is a very interesting project within the Smell Festival in Bologna, in the Casa Morandi Museum. And the Smell Festival sampled 
the smell of uh, Casa Morandi coming from uh, dating back to 100 he- year ago. So uh, the smell of pictures, of wardrobes, of the daily life of the Morandi family in order to have a broader perception. So since we are within an appealing ex- exhibition, our perceptions are enhanced. Here is the Copper Hewitt Museum in New York last summer. This is good news. This is a pen. And if you click on the cross, you can see on the right, you can record all the information text information and image information of the object you prefer. This allows the museum to record the most clicked objects within the museum and at the same time, once you go back, you can download the information and at the main hall, you have an HTTP address. So all the material you've collected can be downloaded automatically in this temporary website. So you're provided with all the like systems. So very interesting to make sure that the museum experience can continue also beyond the museum itself. This is the Denver Denver Art Museum and this is the management room. So in this room we plan the exhibitions. As you can see there's a sample and here outside you have the same object for children. So children can plan the exhibition as uh, the, the, the management do. Part of the research is on merchandising and on advertising for the museum. We have wonderful things, uh, for example, the tattoos, the Botticelli tattoos in the Uffizi Museum in Florence or in some museums. Uh, for example, in Amsterdam, they sell the stones that are used for uh, manifestations and sometimes they are quite uh, inexpensive, I would say. And then we collected some examples of how we can have advertising, so have more funds from sponsors without interfering in the cultural message and the main mission. A very simple case study, and it's almost over. Rem Colas, the 49th Venice Art Biennale, presented a very interesting case study. He uh, was an advisor for the Hermitage. Have you ever been to the Hermitage? Do you know what the conditions are? Hermitage needs a restyling. And he suggested some points that, in my view, are very interesting. And uh, they are the ones you can see on the slide. And above all, he told us that we can make the most of the existing conditions of the museum to create new modalities. Uh, to install and read the museum. So displaying the wonderful um, pieces of the uh, Hermitage, we can display them and create a completely different reading of the museum. It is a quite, let's say, strong case study, but I can assure that the appeal of this uh, uh, display is very important because it helps us perceive the museum as a different space if compared to what we are used to. And I would like to conclude by uh, providing some guidelines on the marketing, uh, cultural marketing strategies for the future. Over the last 15 years, I've worked also for Francesco Mora, a research company, and the parameters, uh, the marketing parameters have changed, and subsequently also for cultural marketing as well. So from the concept of evoking evocation, and the 19s were focused on that, on that. Now we are moving to the experience world. We want to touch, we don't want to simply evoke a projection. We want to touch, to have something tangible. Then the project culture, I think, uh, I, I cannot enter into detail because it's very widespread, the culture of product. So from the concept of large, small to closed and open concept, 
These can be uh, seen as similar aspects, but they make us think about museums in a completely different way. And then cultural consumption, so from inspirational consumption, representing our own inspiration, to something that can inspire us. So these passages are quite simple, but they are changing and characterizing the trends over the next 10, 15 years. As we said, for example, the transformation of many applications, digital applications, and analogic touch points. This is another fundamental tool. Then paradigms are the same, so trust and share. It is very important that in order to share a philosophy, an experience, and a museum, or an emotion, we strongly believe in these emotion, otherwise we cannot transform it. And then the modality to use the experience is changing. Now one of the main concepts is quick and deep. We have many tools making this contact possible. So it is made easier by the communication system than unique and universal. So the experience that the people want to have, above all, in front of a cultural product, must be unique, personal, and at the same time universal, because it has to provide the idea of creating value together with other thousands of people. So obviously I could provide thousands of examples, and I'm running out of time. But these experiences must also be crucial and sustainable. Sustainable is a word that will disappear from the vocabulary because every, everything will be sustainable. Now we are talking about this a lot because we have no possibility of having 100% sustain, sustainable elements in our life. And above all, crucial. And I would like to conclude. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. Wow, we have three minutes left. Uh